In this video, we're going to talk about the relative pronoun katori. It's one of my absolute favorite topics. Why is it my absolute favorite topic? It's so useful because, number one, you can join together two sentences. This makes your speech sound a lot more complex and sophisticated. You'll see some examples of this. And the second reason why katori is so useful is because you can use it to define something. It's inevitable that when you're talking to Russians, there are going to be times when you either don't know the word for something or you forgot the word for something. And Katori is one of your most powerful tools to use to be able to define something that you don't know the word for. In this way, it can sometimes be translated into English as which or that, or what. We'll see some examples. Let's first look at some examples where we're combining two sentences. Here we have two sentences. Это мой друг. Он учится в университете. That's my friend. He studies at the university. Saying it like that with two simple sentences, it's okay. But it could sound a lot more sophisticated if you could combine those two sentences together. This is my friend who studies at the university. So how do we do that in Russian? We'll do that using katori. What will happen is we will find the elements, the element that repeats in both of the sentences. Here it's друг, да? Это мой друг. On which it's a university. You could replace on here with druk. You could say это мой друг. Druk which it's a university. So that's the element that's repeating. What we'll do is we'll replace the second with katori. Это мой друг, который учится в университете. That's my friend who studies at the university. Let's try another one. Это наша соседка. Она любит поэзию. What's the repeated element here? Это наша соседка. Она любит поэзию. We could even say соседка любит поэзию. So how will we replace the second one here with которой? Это наша соседка, которая любит поэзию. Did you notice the difference in the form here? Why does this one look different? From this one. What part of speech is katori? If you're thinking it's an adjective, you're right. And so what it does is it agrees in gender with the thing that it's replacing. Druk, masculine, so katori is masculine. Sasietka, feminine, so katoria, feminine. Let's try this one. Gdje pismo? Ano bila na stale. We can see this is the repeated element. Where is the letter? It was on the table. You could replace this with pismo. So, how will we replace ano with katori? Remember to have it agree in gender. Где pismo которое было на столе? Where is the letter that was on the table? Try this one. Студенты там сидят. Они хорошо говорят по-русски. What's the repeated element here? Studenti. Ani. Da? We could say studenti tam sijet. Studenti hrashogavara paruski. So how will we replace ani with katori? Studenti katori tam sijet. Hrashogavara paruski. Notice that here we had to rearrange the word order. We'll always have katori right after the comma. As we said, katori is an adjective, so here we have our nominative forms of katori in the different genders. Say them after me. Katori. Katoraya. 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 These three don't sound too much different because of vowel reduction, but they're definitely spelled differently. Now we'll see some examples where we have katori in other cases. Katori is not always in the nominative case. Вот книга. Я ее читала вчера. 
There's the book. I was reading it yesterday. So here the repeated elements, the book, right? Kniga. But here it's not in the nominative case. It's in the accusative. So we will have to replace it with the accusative form. Accusative feminine still, because it's still replacing kniga. Accusative feminine. So can you think of what that would be? We'll come back and take a look. Let's try this one. Это мой друг. Вы его знаете. What's the repeated element? It's друг. This is my friend. You know him. What case is him, его, in here? Again, it's accusative. So we'll have to put katori into the masculine animate, because it's a person, right? Accusative. Can you think of what the answer will be? We'll come back and check it in a second. Let's try this one. Вот книга. Вы о ней говорили вчера. Here's the book. You were talking about it yesterday. We want to make that sound more sophisticated. We want to say, here's the book that you were talking about yesterday. What case do we need here? With all, we'll need prepositional. And the ending here can give you a little clue. And you'll see how this works in a second. Let's try these. Let's take a look. Here's the book that I was reading yesterday. Вот книга, которую я читала вчера. So, katori is, again, taking our adjective endings. Here it's feminine accusative. Because that's what we're replacing katori with here. Это мой друг, которого вы знаете. This is my friend that you know. Since friend is masculine animate, we'll have to have masculine animate accusative, which looks like genitive. How about this one? There's the book. You were talking about it yesterday. There's the book that you were talking about yesterday. And in Russian, we have to rephrase it to sound a little more formal in English. There's the book about which you were speaking yesterday. Вот книга, о которой вы говорили вчера. And notice that here, this kind of gives you a clue as to what ending you need. Similarly here, you can find a clue about what ending you need. So, который is just another adjective, just like novi. It will take any adjective endings, and katori will always have to agree with the gender and the number, meaning similar or meaning singular or plural, from the thing it replaces. But it will always take its case from the role it plays in its part of the sentence. So it doesn't matter what case the thing is in the first half of the sentence. It matters what the meaning is of the second part. And here I've kind of given you a little formula for how katori phrases work. You have a first part of the sentence, a comma, and that's why they make it really big here and this alligator or whoever he is is pointing at it. Kama always comes before katori. It has to have the right ending and then we have the rest of the sentence. In Russian, we are very strict about separating clauses with commas. And here we have two different clauses. Since both of the parts of the sentences of the sentence could be their own sentence, meaning they each have a subject and a verb, they are each clauses. And in Russian, you can you have to separate clauses with a comma. Almost always, katori comes right after the comma. The only exception, and this is what they're talking about here, is if there's a preposition with katori. If there's a preposition going with katori, the preposition will come right before katori. And if you think about it, prepositions are always sort of smashed into the next word. So it's not even really a separate word in that instance. It's not separate from the meaning. So that's the only exception. 
let's try these. Combine these ideas as if they were different sentences using katori. We have Eta Djevushka. Yeyozavut Natasha. Here's a girl, her name is Natasha. Eta Djevushka, Anani Panimaid Pankliski. Here's a girl, she doesn't understand English. So we'll combine these to sound more complex. This is the girl whose name is Natasha. This is the girl who doesn't understand English. Eta student, Yimu Dvatsa Dvagoda. Eta student, Yivozavut Dinis. So this is a student, he's 22 years old. This is a student, his name is Denise. If we want to sound more sophisticated, we'll say, this is the student who is 22 years old. This is the student whose name is Denise. Это русские. Они живут в Волгограде. Это русские. Им нравится танцевать. These are Russians. They live in Volgograd. These are Russians. They like to dance. To make it more sophisticated, we'll say, these are Russians who live in Volgograd. These are Russians who like to dance. See if you can figure out what the answers will be. How will we replace the repeated element with katori? Maybe pause and try it. Here's what we have. Это девушка, которую зовут Наташа. What case do we have here? Accusative. Because they call her. Это девушка, которая не понимает по-английски. This is a girl who doesn't understand English. Again, we have to have it agree with девушка and gender. But here, she is the actor of this part of the sentence. So we need nominative case. Это студент, которому 22 года. Remember that in Russian, to say someone is however many years old, we say, to him, there are 22 years. And you can see we have a little clue here with yemu. Yemu katoromu. Это студент, которого зовут Денис. Again, accusative, just like in this. But here we have masculine animate, which looks like genitive. Это русские. Которые живут в Волгограде. Here, nominative, because they are the ones living in Volgograd. Plural, of course, because of plural русские. Это русские, которым нравится танцевать. Remember with нравится, we have to use dative. So who likes to dance? Им нравится танцевать. And we see we have a little clue here with им. How can we use katori to define something? We'll be doing this a lot more in class, but I want to show you at least one example and have you start thinking about this. Что такое? What if we want to describe what something is? Что такое библиотека? What is a library? Это место, в котором люди читают книги. It's a place in which people read books. So we can use kind of general words like человек, person, место, place, предмет is like a, an object, штука is a thing, еда, food, мебель, furniture, одежда, clothing. These are kind of general words. We can use these combined with katori to define words, just like this here. Это место, в котором люди читают книги. We'll be doing many more of these defining things using Katori coming up in class. Это кран, который пьет воду.